Smallholder natural rubber farmers are affected by fluctuation in rubber prices. When the price of natural rubber is high, farmers are at a disadvantage because there is an oversupply in the market. But when the price of rubber is low, farmers suffer a drop in their incomes. Rubber-based agroforestry is a strategy for farmers to deal with fluctuations in rubber prices. Through agroforestry, sustainable income can be achieved. Agroforestry also supports biodiversity by increasing the number of species within a smallholder rubber plantation. In the following module, we will discuss the definition of agroforestry and plants that are suitable for rubber-based agroforestry. Rubber-based agroforestry is integrated land use where rubber as the main crop is planted together with food crops, annual plants, rhizomes, or wood-producing trees. Benefits of agroforestry for farmers Agroforestry can reduce risks due to crop failure or declining prices of main crops. When rubber prices are low, the production of other crops can increase or replace farmers' income from rubber. Agroforestry also provides sustainable income from various types of plants because of different harvest cycles. Agroforestry supports good use of natural resources, increases land productivity, uses labour more efficiently, and reduces costs of weed control. Benefits for agricultural land Agroforestry protects topsoil, increases nutrient levels, protects plants against diseases and pests, improves microclimate, increases biodiversity, and suppresses wheat growth. There are two types of rubber-based agroforestry, simple and complex agroforestry. Simple agroforestry consists of rubber planted together with one type of wood producing tree and a maximum of five other types of plants. Complex agroforestry consists of rubber planted together with two or more types of wood producing trees and more than five other types of plants. These can include rhizomes, food crops, or annual plants. Plant selection criteria for agroforestry. In selecting plants for agroforestry, there are several aspects that need to be considered. Economic aspects relate to the cost of plants for agroforestry. Selecting the type of plants would need consideration of the cost of seeds and fertilizers, labor, pest and disease prevention and control, storage and processing, and transportation to markets. Market demand must also be surveyed, taking into consideration, for example, the availability of markets, the selling price of the crops and harvest cycles. Social aspects include farmers' knowledge of crop management, availability of labour and field equipment. Safety is also a consideration if the plants are of high market value and may be subject to theft. Each plant requires a different thickness of humus, soil pH and nutrient content. Plants that require similar humus, pH, and nutrient profile to rubber plants have to be selected. This also applies to climatic factors such as the amount of rainfall, humidity, wind speed and direction, and air temperature. Selected plants will have minimal interactions with roots and rubber tree canopies. They must be shade tolerant and not compete with other plants. Rubber plants that are three years old generally tend to develop a canopy and form a shade. Therefore, it is necessary to choose plants that are resistant to shade. These types of plants include turmeric, ginger, and cardamom. In addition to providing alternative income, they also help to prevent white root disease. Some annual crops that can be intercropped with rubber include cocoa, coffee, cinnamon, sugar palm, and candle nut. There are many advantages with planting annual crops. 
They require to be planted only once a year and the cost of seeds are cheaper. The cost of labour is also cheaper as it does not require intensive maintenance. They provide a long-term, medium level of alternative income when rubber prices are low. Examples of rubber agroforestry with annual plants Rubber and coffee planting provides medium level income gains when rubber prices fall. The following are guiding information for planting rubber with coffee. The distance between rubber plants must be 3 meters. If Arabica coffee is grown, the distance between coffee plants must be 2 meters. If Robusta coffee is grown, the distance between coffee plants must be 8 meters. The size of the coffee planting hole must be 60 times 60 times 40 centimeters. Planting rubber with salica and mangosteen provide regular income for farmers. Rubber provided weekly income, while salica and mangosteen provide seasonal income. Salica planting material is derived from its saplings. The distance between salica trees must be 3 meters. The distance between the salica plant and rubber plant must be 3 meters. The size of the salica planting hole must be 50 times 50 times 50 centimeters. The distance between mangosteen plants must be 10 meters. The distance between the mangosteen plant and rubber plant must be 6 meters. The size of the mangosteen planting hole must be 40 times 40 times 40 centimeters. Examples of timber producing trees are mahogany, maranti, nyatu, gaharu, and pulai. They can be planted together with rubber with a distance of 12 meters between them. Timber producing trees provide long term income. Agroforestry planting techniques can be applied to monoculture rubber plantation. An analysis of vegetation in the rubber plantation has to be done. Farmers can record their analysis on observation forms. Things that need to be observed include the types and number of plants with tree canopies present and their production and economic value, the types and number of plants that are present above ground and their production and economic value, the types and number of plants that are below ground and their production and economic value. Based on the analysis, plants with no economic value can be replaced. If the plot of land only contains rubber trees, farmers can decide to plant crops that have economic value based on the plant selection criteria for agroforestry. Implementing agroforestry when establishing new rubber plantation or rejuvenating older ones is highly recommended. It provides income for farmers before latex production begins and can provide weekly, monthly, seasonal and long-term income while accelerating rubber tree growth through intensive maintenance. Shaded area, immature rubber trees Unshaded area, mature rubber trees. Intercropping area for immature rubber trees. Intercropping area for mature rubber trees. 3 meters, distance between rubber trees in a row. 6 meters, distance between rows of rubber trees. Some agroforestry techniques that can be applied when establishing a new rubber plantation. Horticultural plants that can be intercropped with rubber include bananas, pineapples, kidney beans, peanuts, soybeans, corn, eggplants, chili, tomatoes, and rice. Pineapple. Distance between rubber trees is 100 cm and distance between pineapple plants is 40 times 40 centimeters. Watermelon. Distance from rubber trees is 200 centimeter. 
and distance between watermelon plants is 150 times 150 centimeters. Chili. Distance from rubber tree is 50 centimeter. And distance between chili plants is 150 times 150 centimeters. Eggplant. Distance from rubber trees is 50 centimeter. And distance between eggplants is 150 times 150 centimeters. Rubber intercropping with rice or corn, fruit trees, and wood producing trees. After land preparation, rubber is planted together with rice or corn, fruit trees, and wood producing trees. Distance between rice plants from rubber trees are Year 1 50 cm with 16 kg of seeds required per hectare Year 2 70 cm with 11 kg of seeds required per hectare Year 3 7 kg of seeds required per hectare Spacing between rice plants 10 times 40 cm Distance between maize plants 20 times 25 centimeters with 7 kilograms of seeds required per hectare. Planting distance between wood trees is 12 meters and wood producing trees are planted together with rubber planting. This agroforestry system itself is a strategy to deal with fluctuations in rubber prices and increased land use value as well as maintain biodiversity.